it's so safe here that you just leave your keys in the car in case somebody has to move your car. <laughs> you don't lock anything here. It's super cool. Ever since I discovered that the Lufthansa Islands existed, I've wanted to go there. And in case you haven't been, Lufthansa is a stunning archipelago of islands at the very north of Norway, 800 miles north of Oslo, tucked inside the Arctic Circle. Lufthansa is known for its dramatic scenery and rugged beauty. It's a perfect place for nature lovers if you like hiking, fishing, cycling, and even surfing. And in this video, I'll share with you what you need to know if you want to travel here, from housing prices to the lifestyle, food, weather, and things to do. Welcome to Norway. <laughs> <laughs> Being from the tropical beaches of South Florida, Lufuten was unlike anywhere I had ever seen. Filled with towering fjords, dramatic coastlines, and colorful fishing villages. So I decided to take an extended trip there to live at a co-working lodge near a town called Unstad. And in this video, I'll take you on a day of my life there and show you some of my favorite spots in the Lufuten Islands. Good morning, guys. I'm at Heathrow Airport. About to get on this bus. I was supposed to leave days ago and the airport was closed and everything. So now it's Sunday and I'm finally on my way. Why live in Norway? Norway consistently ranks high in terms of quality of life, healthcare, education, and overall well being. It's a very peaceful country that's also safe, ranking 24 out of 163 countries on the Global Peace Index, and it's often near the top of the World Happiness Report due to the strong community ties there and the high level of social support and services for Norwegian citizens. I also found it to be extremely safe to travel there as a solo female traveler. When I was planning my trip to Norway, my primary goals were to go surfing and hiking, but I discovered that Norway has so much more to offer. We are learning the whole life. The whole life. Yeah. It's never ready. Never yeah. finished learning. Wise words. Breakfast in Norway, this is what you get. <laughs> Due to its remote location, it's quite difficult to actually get to Lufuten. The fastest way to get there is to fly into the town of Bodo or Leknes and then rent a car. And in this situation, I highly recommend getting a car as public transportation in this region is scarce and the distances are very far, especially if you want to explore some of the more remote parts of the island chain. You can also arrive by train and bus, however, transferring in the city of Trondheim, but that can take about 17 to 24 hours drive from Oslo. There's also a ferry that leaves from the town of Bergen and takes two or three days to arrive. And I didn't have time to take that route yet, but I'm sure that it's a very scenic trip. It took me much longer than I expected to get to Lufuten as I flew from Florida to Atlanta to London to Oslo and then on to the town of Trondheim. But I'm really glad that I ended up staying on a layover in Trondheim as it's a beautiful city and I made some new friends pretty quickly. I was also exhausted and I really needed the rest after a long day of travel. So it is a beautiful sunset out today. The guy on the plane when we landed, it was so pretty and when we were getting off, he's like, I've never seen it sunny here and I fly here all the time. So I feel like we're really lucky. Wow, it feels so amazing to be back here. Just like the fresh air and like the peace and quiet. Am I getting old? But no, seriously, I was here four or five years ago and I've been wanting to come back ever since. I can't believe I'm gonna be living here for a month. It's so exciting. Okay, so I've decided to leave Trondheim today, unfortunately, but it was the best option for me. So I'm just running some errands and I'm gonna walk by some of the most famous parts of Trondheim and then I'm gonna head back to the airport. What I've learned about 
Tron time in the short amount of time that I've been here is that it's really big for gastronomy and studying. There's a lot of students here. It has the largest student population in Norway. It's one of the three biggest cities. There's a lot of hiking. There's a lot of art. There's a nice cultural scene, a lot of museums. Pretty much if you like to eat and drink coffee, then this is the place for you. Oh, and it's also one of the oldest uh, Viking settlements here. After my stopover in Trondheim, I headed back to the airport to fly to Leknes, a tiny town of only 3,500 people near where I was headed in Unstad. Flight number five, I lost track. Finally, I arrived in my destination and I made it to the tiny town of Tungstad near Unstad Beach, which is famous for surfing. Okay, we're out watching beautiful, beautiful waves in wherever we are. What was it? And the surfers. Unstad Un Un Norway. Unstad Secret Norway. Surf. I stayed at the Arctic Coworking Lodge in Tungstad, which sadly closed earlier this year, but if you'd like to go to this area, there are still many houses to rent in the area. You can rent a rural cabin on Airbnb for as low as $600 per month, but the going rate is between $1,000 and $2,000 per month. When I was there, one of my friends told me that he found a house through locals that he rented for about 500 euro per month. So if you go there and ask around, you might be able to find a better deal. But you can also find housing online on local rental sites such as highbell.no or fin.no where you can find those long-term rentals from around 500 to 800 dollars per month but i found in this region that the best way to find housing in the area is to ask around in person as a digital nomad who works remotely full-time much of my typical day is spent working even if it's somewhere with a beautiful backdrop like Norway. I really enjoy living in Europe because it allows me to have my mornings free and then work in the afternoon with people and companies and partners who are based in North America. One very effective way to start your morning in Norway is with a swim or a surf in the icy cold water and it took me quite some time to adapt from the water temperatures in Florida to the Arctic Circle. So this is my third day surfing in Unstad or in this area and it is massive. There's like three people out but uh, yeah it looks really really good. It just looks really big so I don't know if my endurance is up to par but I'm gonna give it a try. It's so safe here that you just um, leave your keys in the car in case somebody has to move your car <laughs> to get out of the parking lot. So yeah, you don't lock anything here. It's a, a tiny, tiny town. So it's super cool. You want to close the gate so that the livestock doesn't get out. <laughs> So yeah, I'm going to say that was not the most positive experience I've ever had surfing. I tried two different spots and neither of them were really working for me. You can see I actually duck dove so many times that I got like a rash on my eye from the hood because I went under the waves so many times. After my morning surf session, I would typically meet up with my friend Krista at the local cafe to work from our laptops with some coffee and giant cinnamon rolls. Norway is known for having delicious baked goods, but the ambience in this seaside co-working space was very peaceful and perfect for working, complete with candlelight. Although I love to solo travel, I also like to travel with groups and sometimes stay at co-living spaces around the world to have a real sense of community wherever I go. And staying at the Arctic Coworking Lodge allowed me to connect with fellow travelers and locals alike and adapt more quickly to the lifestyle in Norway. 
Your daily life here is likely going to include a lot of outdoor activities like hiking and surfing mixed with some laid back downtime back at your house or Airbnb. It's a really slow lifestyle in this corner of the world, which I really like. And staying at a co-living space, I was able to make friends from around the world. So each day there was always something to do and oftentimes we would have a family dinner together. My housemates would go out and forage for fresh mushrooms and then come back and make a homemade pasta. We would also often sit outside and make a campfire and play music and just talk and chat with each other. This is my favorite thing to do here is just sit outside on the roof, drink my coffee. I'm really gonna miss these mornings out here in front of the mountain. I don't know, whenever I spend like a week or a month in a certain place, I never want to leave. Like I start to feel really at home, but all things must come to an end, good and bad, <laughs> at some point. And if I just settled in every place that I traveled to, I wouldn't travel. Depending on when you go to Norway, you will experience very different weather. So if you go to Norway during the summer or early fall, you can experience the midnight sun where it can stay light outside almost around the clock. Now I was there in the early fall, so it was getting dark a little bit earlier, but that was fine with me because I got to see the Northern Lights in person for the first time and it didn't disappoint. It was stunningly beautiful and it literally looks like the heavens are opening up in the sky above you. So I snapped a few pics from right outside my house. During the day when the weather is good, the best thing to do is to get out and about and explore some of the many little fishing villages and towns around the archipelago. There are also plenty of opportunities to hike. Lots of popular routes and I'll list a few on the screen here for you since I can't pronounce them that well, but you can also just stop along the road and there were a lot of places that we hiked that I don't even know the names of. So two hiking apps that you can use to find different local hiking routes include Norgecart and mappy.cz, which also have offline access. And I found that it's very safe to hike in Norway as there are no dangerous animals and you can also drink the water in many places. Most of the trails are really well-marked paths, but you should also go with a buddy or in a group just in case. It's a beautiful morning in Henningsvær and I'm gonna go meet my friend Fiona for a hike. So we're gonna hike and then work. So in Norway, if you wanna cross a bridge, you have to wait for the green light because the uh, road is one lane. This is gorgeous! That's a trial. Sure. Oh. We've barely left the road and we're already just like on rocks. <laughs> okay, it's been uh, five minutes. No, <laughs> we're out of breath, but we got a great view. We just have to go up there. That's halfway. That's halfway? Yeah. Where that eagle is flying. Where the <laughs> eagle is flying. We're going up there. Going. There it is. It's a football field in the middle of the water. So Fiona and I are pretty high up right now. We were just having a discussion about like how the digital nomad lifestyle is not perfect, but it's times like this that really make everything worth it like expensive traveling or the loneliness or the frustrations or i don't know just everything that comes with this lifestyle and then when you get to hike this kind of a mountain on a thursday morning indescribable i got it oh my god ah! oh, what is this i've never seen anything like this Thank you.
With all of that hiking, you'll definitely work up an appetite and Norway doesn't disappoint when it comes to food. Although the cuisine can be quite simple, it's delicious and fresh. So if you like bakeries and fresh seafood, it's a good place for you. Now, some of the foods are an acquired taste, like these giant pieces of dried salted cod. I tried to like it, but I just couldn't get on board. But I think it's important to try the local foods wherever you travel. There are also loads of fresh berries in Norway, and my friend and I went out picked our own berries and made these delicious smoothie bowls with homemade apple chips and granola. Simply divine. There's also a lot of Norwegian salmon in Norway and you can see these giant salmon farms out in the ocean as you drive along the coastal areas. My favorite restaurant that I went to there is called Anita's and it's located near Rain. But honestly, there's nothing better than driving along these incredibly scenic roads of the Lufthansa Islands and just stopping to take photos and admire the scenery along the way. Actually, making this video is making me want to go back as soon as possible because it's just such stunning landscapes, so quiet, so serene and peaceful, and it's certainly a place to keep returning throughout your lifetime. Some of the key places to stop and visit along your journey can include Henningsvær, which is a picturesque town with fantastic hiking and the most beautiful soccer pitch in the world. It's actually out on its own peninsula. Then there's Svolvær, which is a bustling town with lots of shops, more hiking and restaurants and waterfront views, and there's also a lot of museums there. The towns of Rain and Os are fishing villages in the Moskines municipality, and this is really a beautiful place to rent a fisherman's hut, live like a local, and get away from it all. I also really enjoyed the Lofotor Viking Museum, which is the largest known longhouse in the world where you can learn about the history of Vikings in Norway. Evidence of human settlements in Lufotin date back 11,000 years. When to go, you'll want to travel to Norway in the spring or summer to get those long days in the midnight sun, or fall and winter for the northern lights and also winter sports such as skiing and snowshoeing. I hope that this video gives you a good idea of the lifestyle in Arctic Norway and what you can expect if you go. And for more videos and travel guides from countries around the world, then click on the thumbnails here to keep watching.